first off is the tank pressure gauge. That's located right here. It goes directly into the tank. This is going to tell you the actual pressure inside of the tank. Next, we have our on-off lever. When you turn it on, the air compressor is going to fill up to a specified pressure and it's going to automatically turn itself off even though the switch will still be in the on position. Now when you use your air compressor and your pressure gets low, the switch is going to stay on and the air compressor will automatically kick on, fill back up, and then turn itself off all while the switch is still in the on position. Next we have our regulator pressure gauge and our regulator. This is going to allow us to set different pressures. For example, if a tool needs a little bit higher pressure, we can set this higher. Or if another tool needs a lower pressure, we can back it off and relieve some of the pressure until it gets to what we need. Here we have our coupler. This is what our hose is going to plug in. And on the other end of our hose will be a tool. Over here we have our pump oil fill dipstick and our pump oil drain is located at the bottom. Lastly, we have our drain valve and our pressure relief valve. Before we start up our air compressor, there's a few things we need to go through first. To start off, we need to have our switch in the off position. Next, we need to make sure that our air tank has been drained. Next, we want to make sure that our tank pressure gauge reads zero, telling us that there is no pressure inside of the tank. Next, you want to make sure that your safety valve is working properly. An easy test is to go ahead and take the end of it, pull it out, and then let it go back in by itself. If it goes back in by itself, then it's working properly. If it doesn't, then you're going to want to have someone look at it. Make sure that your drain valve is tightened. And the next thing we need to do is check the oil to make sure that there is enough oil in it. And our last item is just to make sure that all of these guards are secure and that they are in place. You never want to run it without any of these guards in place. Talking about accessory and attachment safety. Exceeding the pressure rating of air tools, spray guns, air operated accessories, um, even tires on your car or other things that you inflate could cause them to explode or fly apart and injure someone. In addition, if you exceed the air pressure of the tanks, you could damage them also. You always want to reference the user's manual when looking for the operating pressure. On this tool's manual, the operating pressure is between 70 and 120. With air compressors, you want to make sure that you never inflate small, low-pressure objects such as children's toys, footballs, or basketballs, or anything like that. I'll be talking about air compressor maintenance tips. Before you perform any maintenance tasks, you first need to turn the compressor off, unplug the compressor, drain the tanks, and let your system cool off for a little while. You want to check your oil level every day. You want to also inspect your compressor for any oil leaks every day. On a daily basis, you want to drain the condensation from your tank. And lastly, you always want to check for unusual vibrations, noises, or air leaks every day. Now, on a weekly basis, you want to check your air filter and clean that out. In addition, you want to wipe down your air compressor at least once a week.
At a minimum of once a month, you want to check that safety relief valve and make sure it's working properly. And every 200 hours of operation, you want to replace the air filter and change the oil. I'll show you how to change oil in an air compressor. First off, ensure that your unit is turned off, unplugged, and has cooled down. You will want to find a suitable container and place it under the drain plug, which is located here. Next, we're going to remove the oil dipstick. After that, we're going to remove the oil drain plug. If you tip the compressor, it'll help it go a little bit faster. You want to allow plenty of time for all the oil to drain out. Once all the oil has drained out, go ahead and replace that drain plug. Next, you want to fill it back up with the correct amount and type of oil as specified in your user's manual. And lastly, reinstall that oil dipstick.